this morning, but I needed the praise and worship this morning. You know, this may kind of happen when you get older, but I woke up this morning and gravity had doubled on the planet, and I'm not sure why, and the, the brain was foggy, and I got up thinking, I need thee, oh, I need thee this morning. But there's something about the presence of God. When we come together and we worship him, God begins to give some strength, doesn't he? It's kind of how we fill up our spiritual tanks. And uh, I'm realizing more than ever that I need his spirit more than ever. I need his anointing more than ever. I need his wisdom more than ever. It's interesting, I'm kind of still stuck on authority. I thought I was leaving it and I came back to it. And those that haven't been used to the way that I, I teach and preach, you know, sometimes preachers will outline things. Like if I'm writing a course, it kind of goes one way because I kind of know where I'm headed. But when I'm preaching, I just try to tune in what heaven wants that morning. And God, a lot of times, will take two or three or four series, and they just kind of all weave together. I, I've, I've been hearing back from places like Nigeria and places in India. And this one guy from India really got it. He said, you know, I've listened to the last three series that you have done. And he said, I come to realize what you're weaving is a tapestry. He said, they all kind of go together. And he said, they kind of, they're kind of taking you someplace that without all of them going together the way they were going, you'd never found the way to get there. And I'm thinking, well, he's smarter than I am because I didn't realize that, <laughs> you know. But, you know, we, we, now over the last few weeks, we've been examining authority, and we've looked at it from a lot of different points of view. We've looked at how that God gave dominion to man. Satan took that dominion when man fell. Jesus came to give it back. We've also found that the first thing an authority that you need to take over is authority of yourself. If you can't, if you can't have authority over yourself, you're not going to have authority anywhere else. We also found that the only way really to have authority is you've got to be under authority. So I'm either, uh, Paul made it really clear in Romans, I'm either under the authority of my King Jesus or I'm under the authority of the devil. And what determines that as a believer is what I yield my members to. If I yield my flesh to sin, it opens up the door and it moves me from the I am under the headship of Jesus category to I've put myself back under the old Pharaoh of this world. And the only way to get back is to repent and start doing the things that we know to do. Last week, we dealt with uh, everything that's going on in education today. I have never seen such a move to dumb down the American people in my life. And this isn't the first time they've done it. You know, we, we, we've talked about C-Scope. There's also one they're trying to implement in all the schools called the New Core Curriculum. It makes simple mathematics into things that nobody could figure out. And it's on purpose. At the same time, that same spirit is in the church, and Christians are trusting in sound bites instead of sound theology. We don't get into this book anymore. We prefer talking heads on TV that just simply tell us that our flesh is okay. And how many know that doesn't work? That I can take authority over my education, and that one of the things that was unique to America that began to go out is we actually had the right to learn. Did you know a lot of other nations, it's not that way? Right now in Islamic nations, women are fighting for the right to learn to read and write. And the main reason it happened in America is our founding fathers said, you know what, you better learn to read God's word. And so we see all these different areas of authority. And I, I was sitting there pondering that this week. And God is saying, listen, I'm, I'm taking you someplace. Because the, the way that people have taught authority in the past, and I've been in the charismatic movement for a long, long time, and there's a lot of truth to what was being taught, but how many know that if a flesh gets a hold of a truth, it can mess it up really bad? And I have seen people take authority, and what they want to do is they want to use the authority they have in Christ to circumvent the world around them to please their flesh. How many know that is fraught with, with problems? And that's really the state of the charismatic movement. I, wanna, I don't want to take authority over the devil so that I can do things in God. I want to take authority over you to make you do something for me. You know what? That's, there's another word for that. It's called witchcraft. That's the whole purpose of witchcraft. That's, right. That's not the authority that God is talking about. But God, 
began just dropping some things in my heart. And, and as we're, we're approaching Passover here the next couple of weeks, and in the stories, the Bible tells us that those stories were given for our example, that there are things that we can learn about them beyond, well, they went to this point and this point and this point and this point, and finally they crossed over into, into, in, in, across the Jordan. I mean, there's a lot more to that. And what is so interesting is God delivered them at Passover. God delivered them from being suppressed under Pharaoh so that they could become a nation. And when I get saved, I am delivered from Satan so that I have the authority to become what God really wanted for me. I mean, when, when, when that came on, to me, it's, it's, it's like light bulb, you know. It, it, all, all of a sudden, I begin to understand that everything bad that's ever happened to you in your life was Satan was trying to do one of two things, either stop you from getting saved, or if he couldn't stop you from getting saved, he wanted the past to stop you from becoming that which God said you are. And yet in Messiah, I have the authority to tell the past no. <laughs> and tell God yes. We studied about the tabernacle. Several tabernacle within, new wineskins. And we discovered that when Moses made the tabernacle, there was a pattern in heaven that he was following. And so he had to create, the, he had to create it after the pattern. And then the apostle Paul tells us, you are the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. That means there's a pattern of you in heaven, of the way that you should be. You free, you unencumbered by what happened in the past. You without the scars, but you with the possibilities. There is a pattern of you in the heart of God that is being released from heaven if we understand that it's there. I don't know about you, I'm starting to get excited, I'm starting to... I'm starting to feel the anointing a little bit this morning. I'm kind of glad. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. This is one of the ones that you need to memorize, and I'm going to be reading it this morning out of the Amplified Bible because it does exactly what the name of the Bible says. It amplifies it. How many of you has the devil made feel like junk, feel like trash, no good, can't do anything? That's the old you. That's the you that he made. But I want you to listen to what the Apostle Paul said, Messiah has done for us. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, uh, taking paths which he has prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, and I love this next part. Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. That's our new pattern. We still are, we're, we're still dealing sometimes with the old pattern, but you need to realize there's a whole new you. There's a whole new possibility. There's a whole new pattern. And guys, I have seen it begin to manifest in some of you guys over the years. I've seen it begin to manifest in me. If you could look at Brother Rodhouse 15 years ago, you'd go, what? Who is that masked man? Because that's not the Pastor Rodhouse that we know. Every, and what's amazing to me, everybody around him when he was growing up, well, he can't do outside work. He can't do this. He can't do that. He's, he, he's, he's too delicate. <laughs> there ain't nothing delicate about that, brother. You give him a hammer, you give him a drill, you give him a saw, and then you give him some wood, and he's out running around going, woohoo! <laughs> you know, he, he loves to work outside. In fact, all, I knew that when he was working for me those last couple of years, I had to move his, his desk to the, where he could see the window. And then he was, was kind of like the old puppy that's always staring out the window. One day I'm going to get out there and I'm really going to do what I want to do. And then we 
I finally had to release him, you know. And and he's he's out doing things and 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 doing manual labor that he loves. And the more tools he gets to learn how to use, the happier he is. Because the devil tried to, to push him into a mold that he never was, and he was never going to be satisfied with that, and it was going to be defeat and anxiety and always thinking, there's something missing in my life. And now God is beginning to go, uh, go with a new pattern. The more he began to walk with God, the more that Jesus set him free, the more that his life begins resembling that new pattern. And in that new pattern, guys, there's the good life. The government can't give that to you. Lord have mercy. There, there have been many a government over the years has tried and it has always ended in tyranny. You cannot create a utopia until the Messiah comes. It's called the millennial reign. Every time man tries to do it, he can make these great promises. Let me tell you something right now. There are politicians, not only in America, but in other countries, are making promises, and they can't even write the checks for it. They can't do it. And so what they need to do, we need to subjugate the whole planet, take everything from everybody so that maybe I'll have enough to write this check. How many know that don't work? It's the old Babylonian pattern. Now, the, the word workmanship here is poyama in the Greek. And it means more than just workmanship by hand or something made. It, it also means the work, the works of God as creator. How many ever look at the universe, and, and I'd get blown away at the universe. The, the more that, and, and in fact, our planet is positioned within our galaxy so that we can actually discover more of the universe. Did you know there's a nebula that looks like a lion's head? There's actually a nebula. Uh, uh, Carl Koch found this out. I wish I could get his slides. There's actually a nebula in Hebrew spells Yeshua. In Hebrew. When we finally found out where God put it, signed his name, you know, he created, he went ahead and signed his artwork there at the bottom. But the, the more that you discover about the universe, the more blown away you get. But what we haven't realized is the crown of creation was not our universe. It was not the galaxy. It was you. The crown of creation is man. There is splendor in you once you begin finding out who you are in Messiah. There's wonder in you. There's all these possibilities waiting to be released. One of the leading experts in, in productivity, they have discovered that within the average human, I'm not talking about Einstein, I'm talking about the average Joe. There is enough potential in you, it would take over 700 lifetimes to live. In every one of us. But it can only be unlocked in Messiah. It can't be unlocked by the Pharaoh of this world. All the Pharaoh of this world wants to do is subjugate you and turn you into a brick for his wall. How many of the Pharaoh in Egypt didn't just walk up somebody and say, you're going to be a carver? How I many know that you can put a chisel and, and a hammer in the hand of a guy? That doesn't make him a carver. It's something communism hasn't discovered yet, but it's true. The Pharaoh would, seek, would find a slave and seek his gift, and then he would subjugate that gift for his purposes. That's all the devil can do for you. There are, there are wonders on the inside of you. There are gifts on the inside of you. And Satan wants to use them for his purposes. And as I get free in Messiah, I take them away from the devil and begin learning to follow a new pattern so they can be used of God for his purposes. Every day, physics is discovering new wonders of the universe. But you know, the, the founders and, and the Protestant movement of, of, of what we call the sciences now, many of them say the greatest science of all is called theology of learning God, because the more you learn about him, the more you learn the way that he operates, the more you discover who you are in him, and it allows you to become so much more.
You see, I just don't know about this, Mike. You know, I've done a lot and I've been through a lot. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, are you, are you in Christ? Are you really in Messiah? Then you are a new creature. I like what Jesse DePlanta says, you're a new creature with a new feature. That word new creature, I think it's the Wymus translation, says literally a new species of being. A free man. Like the second Adam. That's who you are now. But yet, you haven't discovered it. We're so caught up in who we were, we can't discover who we are. And we have been given authority to discover who we really can be. I remember when Mary and I first met Micah. He's no more the man he was back then than the man on the moon either. I'm using a couple of people because, number one, they're kind of family, so I can kind of do this. They can beat me up later. But at, at, this, at the same time, there, there is this long, there's this long period that I have seen God just work. He was satisfied being a mechanic at the local bowling alley when there was so much more there. Now he controls product, or production for a major company up in Springfield. Just see God just... And God's not done with him yet. Just closed on a beautiful house. Every time I pull up in the front of the house, I, I want to pinch myself saying, yeah, this is, this is their house. I wasn't dreaming this. This is wonderful. And see, God has just started. But what we've got to realize, and this is a road to discovery. This is a road to learning. It's a, ro a road first of forgetting. The Apostle Paul says, I forget the past. Only when you forget the past can you learn the future. We got to learn who we've become. In fact, I think part of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 and 10 says, Thy kingdom, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I don't think that's just on the planet. I, I think it's twofold. How many know Jesus? He could kill two birds with one stone every day of the week. Every time he opened his mouth, he could do that. Not only am I on planet earth, what's your body made of? Earth. You're not made from Mars dust, even though there's been a few people I've kind of wondered at times. We're, we're made of earth. Right. And if you look at the way that the Lord's Prayer is structured, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Why, why does it start with that? Well, you always need to start with praise and worship with God. But if I'm his temple, God's got to be reverenced first at his temple before anything else. <laughs> If I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit, where was God worshipped? At his temple. You're my father. You're in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Now, in this earth, let this earth start matching the pattern in heaven. See, once I get that done, then I can have confidence that you're going to meet my day, my daily bread and I have the power to forgive those who come against me. All when the pattern starts matching. We are so, we have so missed our potential. But you know what? God's the God of second chances. God's pouring out an anointing this morning to say, you know what? I've been, I've been waddling in the mud of the old pattern for too long, but you know what? The anointing of the Holy Spirit is here that I can lift up my eyes and I can begin looking into heaven and the Father's going to show me in his word the new pattern. This is something the Protestant church hadn't understood. Now, we dealt with this some in Romans where the Torah of God and the Torah is, 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 the Torah is the opposite side of the same coin of grace. And so the Torah's first job is to convict me of sin. Now, once I accept Jesus, I'm not under the law, meaning I'm not under the conviction of sin. I'm now under the grace, the empowerment of God to do what I see. And so the Torah of God becomes, this is who I am now. 
In other words, I find out the things that I do, and I find out the things that I don't do. You know, if you really, isn't that kind of what, you, uh, what our children kind of discover in the household? These are things we don't do in the household. The dog food is not for human consumption. It's in the bowl down here. We do these different things, you know. And, and it, the, the child is learning, this is how my family behaves. These are the, this is the way mom and dad want me to do. These are the things mom and dad don't want me to do because what I do represents the family I belong to. Did that make sense? And I have been part of a new family. And God has declared in his Torah, you know what, when you are part of my family, you don't do these things because the lying and the cheating and the stealing and the killing and, and the maligning, that's all the way of Pharaoh. That's the way of the old pattern. The new pattern are works of righteousness. And the word of God has already given us plain example. These are righteous acts. This is the way my kids behave. And we begin discovering the pattern. Oh, this, if you have ever seen a kid that's ever been adopted into a new family, the biggest struggle that they have, now you can, you, you can get past the struggle of them feeling like a part, like they were an outsider coming in, but the, the real balancing act for them is, okay, I've got to learn new ways of doing things because that's the way this family does it. There, there was a, a story that Sandra Bullock was in uh, it was about football, maybe the blind side. And, and, they, and she, there's this homeless uh, large black fellow that they kind of adopt and take in. And they begin, begin, she begins teaching in football because the family's really a big football fan and, and he's gifted in that area. She discovers that his gifting is protection. So you know what? You protect the players like you do the kids in this family. And there was this pivotal point that... They, they wanted him to go to the college that they went to and to play on that football team. And so, they're saying, and so there were these recruiters that came up and said, you know what, the only reason that they brought you in was they wanted you to play for their football team from the, from the college. And so it was all just a ploy to use you. And the pivotal point of the movie, when they say, why do you want to go to this college? He straightened up and he got this determination in his face says, because this is where my family goes to college. He discovered his place. He discovered his place. Have you discovered your place? Because until you do, until you discover who you have become, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be satisfied. You can go through the motions, but you never experience the devotion of realizing who that you are. That's why Romans 12 and 2 is so important. He said, be not conformed to this world. If you're conformed to the world, you're conformed to Pharaoh. You're conformed to Babylon. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, when he said that, the New Testament didn't exist. How I many know I'm not, old, I'm not anti-New Testament? I love the New Testament, but I found out God's book started before Matthew. Okay? It actually starts back in Genesis. Now, in the mind of the Apostle Paul, and this is part of the hermeneutical process that preachers are supposed to use. From Paul's perspective, he considered Genesis through Malachi everything that they needed once they found Messiah to be absolutely transformed. He didn't say, now you guys need to wait 100 years for us to get all these writings together because then we're going to give you the real stuff, you know. He didn't do that. He is echoing, he that meditateth on the, on the law of the Lord day and night shall make his way prosperous and have good success. Psalms chapter 1, which is the first of the writing books, tells us that he, that he does not walk in the way of the world but he meditates on the, on the law of the Lord day and night. And when he does, he's going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. That's what the Apostle Paul's talking about here. That, that as I look into the perfect law of liberty, I find out who I am now. I'm tired of the past holding me back. I'm tired of what, how people treated me. Can I, can I give you permission about something? When people treated you bad and they talk bad about you, here's a hint. They were lying. They were lying. 
That was, they were taskmasters for the Pharaoh to beat you down. Why? Because they were slaves themselves. They had a gift that turned into a whip at the hand of a taskmaster. Those were lies. Lies. Why are you basing how you feel about yourself on lies? When God has said so much more. God says, I think good thoughts towards you. Thoughts of life. There's a pattern in heaven. You have a heavenly father that loves you. And he loves you so much he gave his only begotten son just to get you back. But it wasn't just to get you back. It was to make you who you're supposed to be in him. To restore the image. To restore the pattern. Here's some new realities the world can't give you. And this is what I have, have discovered. Satan loves to get you looking to the world or to others to give you what you already have in Messiah. You know, an example. I'm just searching the world over to find something to make me tall. I already bumped my head on enough stuff. Because the reality is I am tall. Maybe not some of the basketball players in, the pro, in, in, in pro basketball, but I'm tall enough for me. I don't want to be any taller. But wouldn't it be silly for me to be searching the world for new products to, to make me taller? And I get frustrated because none of them ever work. I already am. We need to realize that if I am looking for it, I do not realize that I have it and cannot be it. This is going to make sense here in a minute. Everything that I need, I have in Christ. It's already mine. I'm not looking for it. I already know the one who possesses it. I know the one who has the pattern. The more that I get with him, the more I discover the pattern. But if I don't realize it and I'm looking for it in the world, looking for it out here, I can never utilize it here. Two, the world and others cannot give it to you, so you are perpetually seeking something that cannot be received because you already have it. Let me give you an example. This, this is one I've seen with so many believers. This is one I, I've struggled with myself. I want to feel special. Do you know what crazy things people will do to feel special? I can't... Some of the reality shows... You know, Mary and I have watched you know, snippets of some of those shows. And we'll, What's the prize? Million dollars. That ain't enough. <laughs> no. If you offer me a million dollars just showing up, maybe. But for the junk they put you through, to, to have your spotlight, to, you know, to have your day, to, to make you feel special, <laughs> it's humiliation they're selling. And you go into other countries where reality TV was established. It wasn't an American idea. It wasn't a European idea. It originated in South America. And what they'll do is they'll take homeless and starving people and get them to debase themselves for food and make a TV show out of it. That, that's where reality TV comes from. Because they, 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 the, the, the people say, you know, if I can get on TV, I'm going to be somebody. You can't be what you already are. John 3, 16, for God so loved you. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son on the horrors of the cross so that he could get you back because you are special. Not that he's going to make you special. You already are. You are special enough for him to pay the ultimate price to get you back. You don't do that with a chunk of coal. You don't do that with a piece of dirt. You do that for a gem. Come on now. You do that for something that's of worth. You were of worth while you were a sinner 
That's why Jesus came and died for you. You're a diamond, and he's trying to get all the mud off of you the devil put on you to hide who you really are. Guys, the world cannot make you feel special. What it does, the world system will make you feel like something to manipulate you than poison your life. I've seen it over and over again. We don't need that. The truth is, you're so special. Before this world hung in space, God had a pattern for you. A good pattern. A wonderful pattern. A pattern filled with joy and love and purpose. Before Adam drew his first breath, God knew your name. God knew your name. Your whole name. You know, some of us, you know, have two, three, four middle names. He knows them all and all your nicknames. He knows them all before you were ever born. And says, you know what? There's this guy named Michael Kenneth Edward Lake. And I've got a purpose for him. I've got a pattern for him. And if he would discover me and my purposes for him, he'll eventually begin to match that pattern. I've kind of, you know, do I have a purpose? Absolutely. But it's not to be a slave of Pharaoh. It's to be an agent of the king. That's right. An agent of the king. You're of the royal family. I just had another thought I wanted to add and it's dropped out. Oh. See, if you, I'm getting that age if you don't write it down. We have, we have men now that want to change this word. They're constantly changing this word. Flesh hates this word. Because the word's first job is to show you, Jack, you need salvation. You're a sinner. You, you bad with a capital B-A-D. You bad. And you need a savior. If you don't, you're going to hell. Sinful man hates this, wants to change this. But the reality is, this book's here to change you. Prayer. 90% of prayer is not about changing your circumstances. To my charismatic quandary about how I was taught I can have whatever I ask in Jesus' name. And so I thought, well, you know, new Santa Claus. <laughs> you know, you pull out this big list. And I found out that 10% of my answered prayers are about what I need. But the more time I spend with God, the more, you see, I can, we, we go into prayer acting like we got to change God. God, I got to change your mind about this thing because I need some help. In reality, God is saying, if you let me change you, you wouldn't need so much help all the time. And so as I spend that time in prayer with him, this finite comes in contact with the infinite. Mortality comes in contact with immortality. This limited comes in contact with eternity. I am a very movable object, but I am coming in contact with that which cannot be moved. Therefore, I change. <coughs> I have found out that as I have prayed things through and really prayed them through and interceded and, and sought the face of God, what changed was me in that situation. Sometimes the circumstances changed, sometimes they didn't, but what changed was my attitude, my perception of the situation. And then many times in my life, once God could get a hold of me and change my response to the situation, the situation would change because I was the focal point creating the very thing I was seeking God to change. Didn't even know it. Romans 
Right now, heaven is pouring. In. We, we're having a window of heaven opening up here saying, listen, if you seek my face and get in my word, I'll begin showing you you, the new you, the you in Christ, the new creature. I'll begin showing you doing things you never imagined you were able to do, showing you your worth. God needs to do it in this hour because there's a Pied Piper coming. His name is the Antichrist. And people that are not complete in Christ will chase after him as he promises them rainbows and unicorns and glitter or whatever else. All these things he's going to promise them, not able to deliver on any of them, but to enslave them. If you're not free in Christ, you'll chase after it. But God is saying, let me make you. You see, God's wanting to make us the tower that can stand the storm. God's wanting us to have that house that's built upon a rock. God's wanting us to be that tower that his name can be in that stands up as a, as a standard against the evil one. There's so much more authority and power in you than you'll ever realize. But you've got to discover who you are in Christ first and begin matching that pattern. The more you match that pattern, the greater the anointing, the greater the authority begins to manifest in your life. The freer you get, the happier you get. Everything around you can be going to hell in a handbasket and you have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Mary and I have been through some situations that in the natural there should have been no way we had peace. But we're sitting there, we're looking at each other saying, I feel peaceful. Yeah, me too. You think we're drugged or something? You know, it's, it's like, we're not normal anymore. What's going on? And God brings us through because that peace sustained us through because there was a greater pattern. Guys, if you get anything out of this morning, you have been given authority to become the real you and Messiah. Heaven is waiting to reveal it. Hell is struggling to prevent it. And the Holy Spirit is waiting to empower it. It's here for the taking. And the only way that you're going to find it is an absolute surrender to Messiah. Absolute surrender. I give up, God. I give up trying to find that which I have just learned I already am. I'm complete in you. I'm expecting your time in the Word to begin changing in the next couple of weeks. I'm expecting your time in prayer. And I'm, I'm going to, actually, I actually am going to end with this. I know I've already said that two or three times. That, that, that's preacher ease from I'm commencing to get ready to one day close. Um, we've been through some stuff in the last 20 years. How many of everybody's been through stuff? And. Sometimes you feel like, what's the use praying? You know, God, I'm grateful. But I see all these people and, and I, I pray for them, but they don't want to change. They just want God, they, God, they just want you to make you, them more comfortable in their sin. And it, it kind of gets discouraged sometimes, don't it? And you, you pray for people and you try to share with people and, and, and different things and and uh, I told God that because God says, you know, he says you're, you're praying, but you're not really fellowshipping the way that you need to. And, and I actually had to come to grips with I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Not in God. I'm just, just, just disappointed. And you know what? God, God said, you know what? You're about ready to turn the corner of the last leg of the journey to getting something. He said, don't, don't get weary in well-doing. Come on up. Come on and pray. C come on back in because I need to show you who you are on the other side of this thing. I need to show you what you're going to be on the other side of this thing. Don't, don't get weary. Don't let the devil pull you down. And if you've been pulled down, God is saying this morning, don't let the devil pull you down. Instead, begin looking up. Don't look down at the bog that's held you down for so long. Start looking up from whence our help comes. God's wanting to pull you out and pull you up and establish you like never before. That's why he's been having me teach on authority. 
is he's saying, you're going to have authority to become everything the devil has been trying to keep back in your life. It starts here. It starts now. I'm going to mark it down on my calendar. This is the Sabbath. Things begin to change. I begin to change. I begin to discover who I really am. Now, Father, we just come before you this morning in the holy and the precious name of Jesus. Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit would loose an anointing on us to come completely out of the reign and the rule of the Pharaoh of this world and to come completely under the headship of Christ and that you would begin loosing a new authority in us to discover the pattern that you have for us. Father, we're new creatures in Christ. Open our eyes to that fact. And Father, let it overwrite all the lies the enemy has sold us down the years. And Father, we look to your spirit to do it. And Father, we stand on your word that says that this good work that you started in us, Father, you are more than able to complete it. And Father, we just seek heaven to begin that finisher's anointing to complete things in our lives. And we thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus.